A kind day to you all, I'm Kinsmark, and this is Chapter 2 of Let's Play Spell Gear. I completed the tutorial and learned the fundamentals of the game in the first episode, so I'm checking out the actual gameplay now. I can't let go of the fact that this game does have a limited combats per day system implemented, because these tokens up here represent the number of matches one can play prior to having to purchase with actual money the right to just engage in more matches each day. Anyway, so I think I'll check out World? The Foggy Island, for now. First time in the world. Alright, so Spellgear has an open world to explore, I'll judge that. One where you can relax from the arenas, completing quests, killing monsters, or earning in-game currency. At this time, there are two islands in the game, Foggy Isle and the larger one, Storm Island. The largest, Frost Island, is in development. Alright, press M to open the map, push and hold Alt in the world to display a cursor. In the upper left corner is your rating scale, current rank, and how much of your rating do you need to move on through the next rank. At the beginning of the game, you'll need to increase your rank from ninth step to first step, after which you'll be asked to choose a faction. Alright, then if you want to skip training quests in the world, select skip quests. Alright, uh, I guess I'll just jump in here. Whoa, okay, alright. Uh, camera, calm down there. A little jerky. Okie dokie. Uh, this is your current quest. You can change it here. I, uh, I don't see a current quest. It's just an arrow pointing off into the sky. Uh, okie dokie then. Alessandro Diaz, Village Elder's Assistant. Okay, how are you, dude? Welcome, good sir. I suppose you've come to our island in search of new weapons, skills, and adventure. I'm Alessandro, and I look after Fogia when the elder's busy. Okay, go on a stone, stale, and speak to the senior mage. Okay, alright. What is this place? You're on Foggy Isle, my friend. It lies to the north of Storm Island and is a part of the Kranos Archipelago. I don't care. Because this is already failing to establish much of anything resembling an intriguing world, so just get me to the action, man. The island is under the authority of the Order of Magic and the Elder is one of its masters. Don't worry about that right now. We can talk about it later. Good, got it, thank you. Alright, sounds good. I'm off. So I need to go that way then. Cool. Can I sheathe my sword? Alright. Hero landing! <laughs> Jesus. Okie dokie then. Hey man. You got a large enough staff there? Killium Elemus. Right now, Spillgear has three classes, each of which corresponds to a basic element, which you can see in your character's window. You're a synthesis elemental mage. Remember it. While leveling your character in the world, you'll have access to new weapons, providing you new skills in addition to those already available. Each skill matches the properties of one or more elements, all of which have their own advantages and disadvantages, or rather, isadvantages. Oh, this is still early access. Come on now, could it kill you to put some spell check on the things that you actually put into your game dialogue? In each and uh, uh, other classes. Alright. In order to activate a skill, the weapon it contains should be in your main and or alternative slot. In Spellgear, you can't walk around without a weapon and or equipment. Alright, so that answers the question I just asked. To change equipment or weapons, you can only do so in the protected zone. Keep this in mind before you hit the road. Alright then, so I can't just rummage around through my pack and put something else on. Oh, careful with that sword, lad. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, sheaths, those just arcane implements aren't invented yet. You couldn't just put it safely at your waist. No, you gotta hold it up threatening-like. So if you sneeze, you might stab me in the crotch. All right, here's some good advice. Go get some minor health potions before you even think of diving into battle. Well, what are you waiting for? Get to it. All right, cool. Uh, yeah. So, this guy, I assume. All right. How's it going? Yeah, colorful looking Power Rangers reject. Traveling Merchant. Three major currencies in Spellgear. Coins you get from completing quests, selling loot to merchants, and trading in auctions with other players. Arena tokens produced exclusively in the arena. Ingots mined in the Crusades. Uh, okay, alright, this this isn't... never mind. <laughs> now we're getting into things that aren't currencies, even though this is supposedly about the currencies. There are many different kinds of potions to fill in the game, and a temporary increase in your carrying capacity. Okay. All I'm seeing is just different colored illustrations here. These don't actually tell me what these different varieties are. Like, I assume red is health. Purple, I don't know. This thing just looks like a water canteen. So just tell me more with actual hoverovers or with words, n not just pretty pictures. To purchase equipment from... Uh, okay, alright. Yeah, I know how shops work. Alright. What do you accept as payments? I prefer coins, but I do sell some items for arena tokens. Okie dokie then. So, healing potions. How much money have I got? Uh, where, where is my, where's my monies? I don't know. Can I 
can I, uh, 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 do I just, do I, yeah, there we go. Um, no, oh, that's a pet slot. Where the hell do I drag these? Because I assume I need to drag and drop to, uh, there we go. Not enough money. Okay. So the guy tells me to go get more Heelys, and then I don't have money for, okay, apparently I do have money for Heelys. Okay. How much have I got? Like, I'm trying to eye my menu like a hawk to see if anything changes. I can't see any numbers moving. All right. Uh, I'll just assume that's enough for now. And uh, go about my way. Sure. All right. Hey. Sparky run. Okay. How's it going? Well, Matt, I'm Quillian, a senior mage at your service. Y you didn't introduce yourself, or you just told me, I'd go spend money here. I, I, mean, I, I mean, I don't have a deal with him. I don't know what, what are you trying to say here. Once a long while back, I was a wandering thaumaturgist, and so I've traversed over half of Astana. I've seen so, so much over the course of two continents. Aren't you interested in what I have to say? Didn't you ask to hear all of this? Now, nah, of course you did. Now I know you've come to me about new weapons, as youngsters are wont to do. We will have to wait a little bit, fine by me, as I know patience is a most important virtue. Perhaps you should train in the meantime. Go have a talk with Rogday, who can be found near the bridge in his... Okay. Is there a way I can get those weapons? You'll need to wait for the monks of the Order, and they'll bring the metal to the island any moment now. You've gotten to the Foggy Isle at a good time. Mika's the Blacksmith is an impressive master black... <laughs> Alright, so smiths can repair weapons and armor. Okie dokie, then. Monks are on their way. Make time count. Talking to Rogday. Okie dokie. So, let's go find this guy. Oh, he's right here. Okay. How's it going? Wait, wait. I thought your name was Rog Day. Not Rog... No. Consistency. Look into it. Undergoing quests, even. <laughs> Killing and quests came out of quests. You learn coins and the ratings necessary to increase your rank loot you get from monsters you can sell to vendors. Along with your primary weapon, you have an alternate weapon that can be... Some weapons have extra effects, and they're applied automatically if your weapon is in the primary slot. Alright then. So, now it's Rog Day! Good God, man! Could you iron out at least a little consistency? Altain Hut! I'm not a soldier, don't talk to me like one. I am Rogday. Are you sure? I thought you were Ragnar, a faithful officer of the Order, and now your mentor. And you're a Greenhorn, a rookie Greenhorn. That's what Greenhorn means. You just really made yourself incredibly repetitive and annoying. Why so glum? Have you seen those beasts hanging around the temple? Your task is simple. Reduce their numbers. Kill them. All of them. Wipe them out. Kill a few weak hurtars in the grove over the bridge. Get to it! That's an order! I don't answer to you. Why do I need to? What? Back in my day, those questions were never asked. In the old core, we never asked questions. Now listen carefully, Greenhorn. These are Hurtars. Feel the savages there. Hurtars look around the temple, just look for someone to stab. Why do you let them into your perimeter, then? Seems like you're shitty at your job. With Killian, we have nothing to fear. The Hurtars fear us. Then why do we need to murder them? Nevertheless, simple monks and other traveling guests to our land are having a hard time of it. So something needs to be done. You get me, rookie? Yeah, I... I get you. Loud and clear. Emphasis on the loud. Okie dokie, then. So, uh... Wow. You just... You, you let dangerous enemy humanoids live within a literal stone's throw of you. Yeah, you're terrible at your job, man. Absolutely atrocious. Yep. Yep. They seem so dangerous. What with the whole not swinging at me until I stabbed him in the head. Excellent! The enemy is vanquished. Your hard-earned loot has been placed in your backpack. Yeah, okay, then. So do these guys aggro? Like at all? I think that I... I picked a truffle. Alright, cool. That's a thing I can do. Um, let me just head up to an individual, one of these guys. Are you actually aggressive? No, he just turned around like, no, I mean, you know, I just, uh... Nobody knows my sorrow. Because the humans keep killing us, that's why we're sorrowful. God damn. Right, so, so seriously, hey, do you, do you, want, do you want to fight? You wanna go? You, you wanna? Okay, cool. There we go. All right. There we go. How's about you? You and your freaky anime hair. There we go. Oh. 
I had to kill just a couple of them. Okay. All right. I'll take it. I just, I feel like all I've really done is just provoke a race war. That's fine, though. All right. Uh, wow, you're stronger than I... T I only... I, I, I murdered one guy, stabbing him through the skull without him even noticing me, and then just... I, okay, anyway... Too many cowards and layabouts these days, if you ask me. Well done, killing Zafford while your presence report him. Oh, God, I am still drunk, aren't I? <laughs> oh, law whiskey. Uh, whiskey. All right, let's see here. Pardon me, I cannot speak with you right now. Could you please have a word with Alessandra? Why, 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 why do that? Why? From a game design standpoint, why have an objective that, even though this is a small area, just on principle, why send me to a place that isn't going to do anything for me and is instead going to just send me to a different character? That is just time wasting. It. <sighs> All right. I'm seeing a lot of amateur design at work here, which is a shame because some of the actual aesthetic elements are competently put together. It just seems like the rest of the actual gameplay is so generic and run of the mill. So, anyway. Alessandro Diaz. Good news, senor. Oh, uh, apparently you actually do speak with an accent that matches your name. A lot of myolith will soon arrive on the island, and our blacksmith will manufacture your weapons. There's one problem. Swarms of pythons near the barn may hinder the island. Swarms of pythons? Okay, what's the myolith? Excellent question, senor. It's this charmed metal alloy invented by the order. It's used for forging simple and reliable magical weapons. Our blacksmiths use pyrium, strongium, strongium. Limidium, solidium, and other metals along with it are quite rare and can be obtained in the crusade. Okay, cool. Alright, spoils of war and all that. Let's do that. Okie dokie then. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, there's an invisible wall there. And I took a little damage. Alright. Cue the hero landing. Those don't look like pythons. I see silhouettes in the distance and oh, those look like something else. I don't know what the hell to call them. They're, uh... They're a little more dangerous than your average python! At least just from the look of them. Spiked python. Man. You're a... Uh, a little hideous. And terrifying looking. It's adorable though, because it has like... A unicorn horn. It's a snake unicorn. A snoonicorn. Snoonicorns are adorable, right? Right? Alright. So, how's about... Oh, I have to kill six of these things. Alright. Let's see about doing that then. Another one down. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. And another one falls. And another one falls. Another one bites the dust. There you go. Activate Heelys! There we go. That is a one minute cooldown. Alright, so Heelys are something to actually. Take a little care in using. Alright, let's try a little charge ability there. there Alright. It's about. Wave of Death! Cool. Uh oh, uh oh. I provoked more attacks! That's fine. I'm, I'm actually really not in any appreciable danger. So, time to go report in my successful slaughter. Hola, senor. Job is done. Great work, senor. I do not wish to trouble you. We've got the problem. The monks have gone astray and more than your peer right in the Hurtar's leader den. Why would they do that? Well, why? Most of the ingots are now in the clutches of the gang. Moreover, the monks notice a strange man on the shore who stole a few bars on the sly. I know that has to be Kasim. Talk to him. Who is Kasim and how do I find him? He's a local merchant, senor. They say this guy's been selling smuggled goods. If he starts to deny it, tell him you are sent by the elder's assistant. Because for some reason that'll make him not deny it anymore, I guess. Head north, under the bridge to the forge, you'll find an entrance to the cave. Don't forget, the entrance is under the bridge from the coast side. Okie dokie. I'm not gonna do that! I've achieved the new rank, cause... Oh man, this mode. Maybe it's just cause I don't get a whole lot of gratification out of the general just fetch quests galore approach to a lot of MMOs. At least this one has a condensed field, so a lot of my time isn't just spent traversing the land from one objective to another. However, it does feel, due to that, like a very contrived arrangement. Like, I can see a golem marching around the hills from here. Supposedly, the safest place a character can stand. So, 
I know a lot of this critique isn't just applicable to this game. It's to a lot of MMOs in general. However, having played some MMOs that can escape the usual suspension of disbelief tropes that plague a lot of MMOs, I know it's possible to make one that makes in lore sense as well as presenting a fun and immersive environment for the player. So... All I can say is this feels very familiar for good or for ill. Um, I don't feel like this takes a whole lot of critical thinking to understand. It is fairly cut and dry, fairly straightforward. Get task, go complete task, report task to quest giver, reap reward, rinse, lather, repeat. So I assume that gear acquired through this mode probably carries over into the arena and that that is the reason to continue playing in this mode because otherwise competing against other players will turn into much more of a challenge because gear. So for now, I think I'm going to... Hub? Maybe? There we go. Cut this episode here and check out the actual competitive mode in the next one. So... I am attempting, in my critiques, to note when my feelings and my personal preferences are coming to light, and when it's an actual objective critique. So far, this seems decently put together, if, as I said, generic and fairly run-of-the-mill. There are some issues in terms of some of the actual grammatical problems, um, some of the charm, I, I think it's fair to say, is lacking insofar as it doesn't do anything aesthetically to stand out, and so it just, it feels very generic from the ground up. So I'm, I'm trying to give this as general and fair a critique as I can, because I know for a lot of MMOs, it's tough for them to charm me, even when it comes to some of the most popular that I know are objectively good and well put together games for the genre that they are meant to appeal to. I just honestly have a hard time getting a whole lot of appeal out of MMOs and MOBAs. So this combines a lot of elements of each of those. And so I'm trying to come at it as objectively and fairly as I can and to make it clear when some of my disapproval is more my personal taste than necessarily objective critique. So anyway, all that said, I'll check out the competitive modes in the next episode. So stick around for that here at Last of Press. I'm Kinsmark, and as always, I wish you all good gaming and Godspeed.